All right, so there was quite a bit of confusion about the frequency project and how to calculate the frequencies and how to run the chi-square test. So I wanted to just go over that in this uh, little video clip, show you how those calculations uh, worked, and then uh, everybody who uh, submitted a frequency project and is not happy with the score that they got on that, uh, you can have the opportunity to redo that project with the, the right calculations. Uh, just given the number of people that had issues with this, I think it's, it's fair that we, we have another stab at it because it's, it's kind of important that we get this, get this understood. So first thing is to, uh, to calculate the frequencies themselves. And that's a two-step process. First is we need to count the number of occurrences in the individual frames and then divide that by the total number of frames. Uh, so we're looking at the 2014 data here uh, from the Excel sheet. And the function we're going to use to do this, of course, we could just count them up by hand, but that takes time and, and it's prone to error. Um, and so we're going to use a, a function here. And I'm just going to do it for this one species, which I believe is uh, yeah, BRTE, Bromus tectorum, which is cheatgrass. And so we're going to use a function called count if. Uh, and the count if takes a, a range of cells. And so I can pull this over and give it all of my data cells here. And then we also need a, a criterion for that. And in this case, my criterion is 1 uh, and in, in quotation marks. Uh, and what it's going to do is just count up all the cells that have a number one in there and just give me that that value. So I got to make sure and close the parentheses on the end of that and being a little slow, but there it is. So eight. So there were eight uh, cells along this uh, line that had the number one in there. And then to get the frequency, then I just take that number and I can divide it by my total, which in this case was 75, that gives me a frequency of, of uh, 0.1. I can actually change that to a percentage, which gives me a 10.7% frequency there. Now, for calculating the frequencies for the larger frame sizes, remember these frames are nested. Um, and so to do that for frame size 2, I need all of the cells here that have a 2 in them plus all of the cells that have a 1 in them. And so I can use the same count if statement here. I give it the same range. And then for my criterion, now look up here in the, in, in the sort of bar at the top where I'm writing this formula out. I'm going to say that my criterion is less than or equal to 2. I could say less than three, you know, I, there, there's a number of different ways that I could say this, but having this as less than or equal to two kind of helps me keep it straight in my head as to what's going on. Now, if I hit enter there, okay, you see over here now it's calculated that there are 16 uh, cells in this line that had a value of less than or equal to two. Uh, same thing, I'm gonna count my frequency by dividing that by 75. And let's change that to a percentage too. Okay, so my frequency is 21.3%. Now you'll want to go ahead and fill this out for the rest of the table here using the, the sort of the same kind of thing. Um, I've actually gone ahead and done that for the 2018 data already uh, because we want to look at this chi-square test now. So we're going to take this BRTE here and let's just, for the sake of demonstration, let's pick the uh, frame size uh, of one. Now, chi-square is a test of proportions, but it's gonna calculate the proportions for us based off of the data that we have. And so we need to give it the actual count numbers here. So my value for 2018 is gonna be 10. And where this is gonna go is right here in this sort of observed table on the worksheet, the chi-square worksheet page. So in 2018, there were 10 frames where cheatgrass was present. 
and let's grab the value from year one, which in this case is 2014. I got to keep the same frame size between years. Okay, so frame size one in 2014 had a value of eight. Now, in 2014, I had 75 frames that I checked. Cheatgrass was only present at eight of them, so I need to know how many frames had no cheatgrass in them, and I can just take my total of 75, subtract my eight, and then I get 67. I'm gonna do that for 2018 too. I had fewer frames, so I had 45 frames, and we found it in 10 of them, so I had 35 frames where there was no cheatgrass. The table here is, is summing up these column totals and row totals, and we're gonna use those in the expected table here. Now what chi-square is doing is it's testing to see if the proportion of present in year one is equal to the proportion present in, in year two. And it's gonna do that by comparing it to what we would expect the uh, difference to be just by chance alone. And to figure out what that, that chance is, then we have to come up with these expected values. So how much could we deviate and still have a chance agreement here? And so we're gonna figure these expectations using this formula right here. So for year one present, I'm going to take the uh, row total for year one um, times the column total for year one, which is 18, and I'm gonna divide that by the total number of frames that I measured between both years, 120. And that's gonna give me a value of 11. Now to do the same thing for absent, it's gonna be a, col a row total times column total, which is column total for absent, divided by my overall total. And we'll just kind of fill this out for these remaining ones. And row total times column total divided by overall total. Now you can check your work here. So these values should add up to the same row and column totals that you got from the original data. If they don't add up, then, then something's wrong in your math and you need to go back and, and check it. Um, now, now that we have these expectations, so uh, these are the expected proportions under uh, chance agreement, then we calculate our, our uh, chi-square. And so what we're gonna do here is take the observed minus the expected value, we're gonna square that, divide it by the expectation uh, for each of the, of the four boxes in this table. We're gonna add those up and that'll give us the chi-square value. So right here, uh, I'll say equals. I have to do parentheses here. And so observed minus expected, close my parentheses. Now I need to square that, and in Excel you can you can do uh, powers uh, by a caret and then two, so that that's to the second power or squared, and then I'm going to divide that by my expected value, which is 11. Okay, 0.94. Same thing here for year uh, two or year yeah year one absent. So that guy minus that squared divided by that, okay? It doesn't really matter what order you do these in as long as you do each of the four uh, cells. That minus the expected squared divided by my expected and equals that minus, whoops, See, I gotta do my open parentheses, that minus that squared divided by my expected, okay? Now, it's, it's useful here to go back in and, and check to make sure that you're, at, you're, you're picking up all of the right cells. 
okay? If you grab a wrong cell, you're gonna get a wrong number and that's gonna throw everything off. And so, yeah, Excel is, is calculating a lot of stuff, but um, you definitely need to check your work, okay? Now, in this cell here, all I've done is just summed these values, added them all up, and this gives me my chi-square value, 2.95. Degrees of freedom for this test is, is one, it's the number of rows minus the number of columns, so uh, one, and then my, my test here is this chi-square.dist uh, function um, where we use the, uh, the chi-square value uh, that I got here, uh, the degrees of freedom, and then this is just giving me the probability that I would see a more extreme chi-square value just due to chance, okay? And so in this case, there's only a, like a, a 5% chance that I would see a more extreme value uh, than what I got from the data. And that's fairly convincing evidence that these proportions actually changed uh, between years, okay? So that's how you run the chi-square test. You want to do this for each of your uh, species once you calculate the frequencies. The nice thing here, though, is once you've set this all up, then all you have to do is uh, change, your, um, change your present values by each year, and it will automatically calculate everything, give you your chi-square value and your p-value. One last thing to note. A p-value can be really small, but it can never be zero. Excel will give you a zero p-value, but you should always report this as, say, less than 0.01, because you can't, in theory, have a, a probability that is zero. So I hope this helps. I hope it helps clarify the, the nested frequency exercise and the chi-square values. Uh, definitely you know, let me know if you have additional questions or problems here, and I'll do my best to, uh, to try to get those answered. Thanks.